Hey, everyone. In this episode, I got a chance to sit down and talk with David Wax, CEO of a company called Handwritten. Handwritten is now the largest provider of handwritten notes in the world, and their service allows marketers and salespeople to send authentic handwritten notes as easily as sending an email. We had a great chat about personalization and why personal touch goes so far in today's digital marketplace, and also some of the stats and numbers that he's seeing in terms of conversion rate improvement and response rates. So let's get into it. So, David, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so this is going to be fun. I think this is one of those episodes where marketers are always trying to look how, on how to do things a little bit differently, how to execute, uh, you know, zigging when other people are zagging, you know, things like that. And so, you know, obviously you and your company are, are, are sort of right in the middle of that. And so maybe just give the audience a little bit about you and, and your background, sort of what, what you know, became now what, you know, is, is now your company. Sure. So um, I run a company called Handwritten. And prior to Handwritten, talking zigging versus zagging, it provides a lot of um, help to get some context here. Prior to doing this, I was part of the Zig. Um, I ran a company that did text messaging. So we were one of the largest providers in the, in the country at the time, sending a million texts a day for major brands, retailers like Abercrombie & Fitch, Auto Trader, um, Sam's Club, et cetera. And um, I sold that company and I thought, gee, you know, um, I'm actually part of the problem. The average consumer gets 130 emails or the average business um, worker gets 130 emails a day. They spend 24% of their time just managing their inbox. Um, email is seen as a chore. Nobody has time to read it. You're just so busy deleting it. Um, on top of that, you have Slack and Twitter and um, text messages and Facebook and all these other forms of communication. And it's all just digital noise. So I wanted to know, I wanted to come up with a way to really stand out from that noise. And what we've done is really taken a pen and paper approach, literally. We, we are the largest provider of handwritten notes in the world. We have a platform that allows you to send handwritten notes as easy as it is to send an email or easier, depending on the platform. Um, and we power major brands, insurance brokers, you know, all the way down to individual realtors. The way we do this is we have robots that we patent. Uh, we have two patents on currently and seven more pending. And they hold real pens and they write out your note at scale. Um, in the handwriting style you want could be your handwriting um, with your signature on your stationery. And we can even include inserts like a $5 Starbucks as a thank you for a meeting or a gift card, to, a Visa gift card or Amazon uh, gift card. We include all that as well. Um, what's really great about our solution is we integrate, we integrate with SharpSpring, we integrate with a number of other platforms through Zapier and Integromat. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of who we are in a nutshell. So that's, that's fascinating. I, you know, I, I've used, uh, a similar service in the past. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I always loved was the response that I got from, people that, you know, I would send these out to. So, you know, back, you know, in my past life, I would have investors for, you know, for one of my companies and, you know, I would send those things out and, and it's just amazing. Like just the personal touch and the connection that you get, you know, when, uh, when you do something that is, is, um, as, as meaningful, I think as something you can hold in your hand these days. Right. So, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's just yeah, I think it's neat, and and the fact that you're doing that at scale, right? You're able to plug into these different types of solutions that are already, you know, um, you know, doing marketing and and you know, in different channels like multi-channel, you know, uh, outreach. This is this is one of those things. So it seems like to me, right? I mean, we talk a lot on this show. Uh, anybody who's listening, you know, typically knows this. That yeah, you know, we talk a lot about you know what are the new ways to do custom like new customer acquisition strategies, and then we talk a lot about you know like different tactics and things like that. So how does something like this fold in? Like what it like it, you know if we think about like a like a really good case study of of mm -hmm. you know where you've worked with different companies in the past for new customer acquisition strategies, how do, how do you fit into that? Like, what is the flow think, you know, thinking like, and, um, yeah. you know, what, what is the typical process look like? 
Yeah, so new acquisition is a little bit of a sticky wicket. We do it. Uh, we do it at handwritten. If you go to our website and you want samples, um, you'll fill out our samples request form. We'll send you samples. We'll follow up with real handwritten notes. But you have to have their address information to do that. Um, we can purchase lists if that's something you want to do. In fact, right now we work with car dealers because they have no cars on their lot. So we're actually helping them purchase lists of owners of cars and then follow up with those to offer to buy them. Um, usually we recommend using handwritten notes as a retention um, re upsell strategy. So I can give you multiple examples there. Uh, and I, I know your, your listenership is mostly B2B, um, but I have some examples that are universal. Number one, yeah, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, David, I mean, that, that was actually the other thing that was popping into my head was, you know, on the retention side. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you just brought up, you know, the ability to upsell, uh, you know, mm -hmm. cross-sell as well. So exactly. if we sort of switched just thinking, um, and, and I would I would just say, too, I mean, I'm, I'm my brain's turning a little bit now. I'm just sort of thinking about our own specific use case, right? So we know who our customers are sure. that are, or sorry, let me rephrase. We know who our prospects are. We do have physical addresses for those prospects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I was just thinking about uh, folks that my sales team would want to talk to, right? These are folks yeah. that right now we're running retargeting digital, right? We're running mm -hmm. other types of, you know, demand generation plays that help, you know, people, you know, get into the awareness and then into, you know, product consideration mode. And, you know, it feels like to me that, you know, on a very specific track, you know, it wouldn't be broad broadcast, but on a very specific track for sales team members that feel like, you know, this is a really smart, you know, fits our ICP really well and, mm -hmm. you know, is, is super targeted uh, to give them this capability, you know, where they already know what the physical addresses are, you know, and, yep. and, and they're able to, to do something with that personal touch. Um, well, where, so we, where we find it super helpful is trade shows. So yeah. if any of your listeners are attending trade shows, the most important thing you can get, we buy booths at trade shows, not for the booth, but for the attendee list. Because we want to know who's attending that trade show. We then market to them with three handwritten notes before the show. And on the handwritten note, printed on the handwritten note, well, we also email them um, after. So we'll send them a handwritten note. We'll send them an email saying, did you receive my handwritten note? And then yeah. we'll send another handwritten note and another one. But printed on the handwritten note and certainly in the email is a Calendly invite to um, set an appointment, book an appointment at the trade show. And we walk into that trade show triple booked where yeah. every single slot, we have to actually open up multiple cal Calendly's and keep them separate because we have so many meetings booked. Um, I'm, I've drank my own Kool-Aid here. This all started a couple of years at eTail, which is a big trade show for uh, electronic retailers. And I went to that show. I didn't even get a booth, but I was able to purchase the um, attendee list. Yeah. People were coming up to me in the lobby saying, what are you doing? Because I had so many meetings booked in the lobby. It, it's insane. It allows you to stand out when everybody else is being um, following the same channels and just following up, up with email. And I'm, yeah. you know, constant contact is phenomenal. Yeah. These platforms are great. Persist IQ and uh, Reply IO, they're all fantastic, but you're competing against the same eyeball at that time. And the least used inbox is at the one at the end of the driveway, right? Yeah. So if you're able to say, okay, I'm going to do my multi-channel campaign using the the email and handwritten notes. Handwritten notes literally stand up. They stand up and they stand out. When you send someone a handwritten note, it literally stands up on their desk. And there's very few things that kind of really okay. compete with that. Um, okay. I have a piano tuner. I know this is off topic, but just real quick. I have a piano tuner that sent, um, the company's called like Carlson and Carlson. It sounds like a law firm, but it turns out it's a piano tuner. He goes into your house, tunes your piano, sends you a thank you for tuning your piano. He only needs to be in your house once a year. He has one touch point to be with you. Um, a year later, when he comes back, that handwritten note is often still standing up on the piano. <laughs> so not only was it open, not only was it read, but he's yeah. purchased advertising space on your most prized possession. There's very few forms of communication. 
They're not going to print out a text message. They're not going to print out an email and stick it to their piano. But yeah. that that handwritten note is a gift. That you know, you might include a five dollar Starbucks, but people understand that nobody's taken the 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 time to send handwritten notes now. That handwritten note in and of itself is the gift, and people appreciate yeah. that. Um, so yeah, when you I, send I, them- I, I love that because I think you know I, it just it resonates with me. Uh, two weeks ago, we had um, we were actually out in LA at the B two B marketing expo. And we were mm-hmm. sponsoring the show. And one of the things that I remember Elise and the rest of the events team was thinking through was, okay, well, look, we know we have a whole bunch of current customers and also prospects that are in the LA area that are within you know, mm-hmm. a couple of hours of driving distance of the show. We would love to get them to come in and just have them sit down with us and you know, let's do back-to-back podcast episodes like this one. Yeah. Right. And um, and we have a we had a show um, booth area. And we had, you know, a, a video set up and, and professional podcast, you know, recording and everything. And, um, you know, this would be something that would be perfect for that. Right. Because, you know, obviously we had the physical addresses, not only of the, you know, the attendee list, but also, you know, we were looking for folks that were within our own you know, list that we would be able to, to send out. So of course we were doing email, we were doing, you know, very personalized, you know, outreach and touch points, but this would be that extra like personalized layer, you know, that allows people to, you know, come in. And, and I think, you know, for B2B, you know, when we're talking about like getting people in seats at an in-person event, that's highly valuable. Right. And then Absolutely. layering in something like this would be super interesting. Yeah, so, when I was when I was head of mobile at um, Hello World, they said, which is part of Merkle now, they said, you know, what's is 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 te- is texting is mobile the, the most important channel? I said, no, the most important channel is wherever your customer is. So you want to have a multi. I mean, it's obvious, but a lot of people need to have it beaten into their head. You need to have a multi-channel approach to hit that target from multiple because you don't know what their perfect channel is. You don't know how they want to receive information. So by using mobile in addition to um, to, to to text in addition or you know in addition to email in addition to handwritten notes it's just it's just one more way to get in front and stay in front of that customer yeah so what's interesting too you know is just the fact that at the end of the day you know you've got a series of these things that are you know I, I think about Elise and, and, you know, she, again, she was part of our events team. And I think about how busy she was leading up to the event because it's massive, right? There's lots of things that we're Mm -hmm. sponsoring and we were keynoting and we were doing all of these different things. And she's managing a bunch of different things along with the rest of her team. And they did fantastic. But I think about like where she was, you know, leading up to that, she was managing a bunch of different projects with lots of different balls in the air, right? And something that is easy and quick and scalable that she can quite literally just load up, you know, and and have a, a message uh, that makes that outreach point easy is also just as critical as like having it delivered, you know, in the impact of it when it lands in your inbox, at least to her, right? I mean, from her perspective. So how do you make that process easy? How do you you know, obviously you sounds like you have the integrations, et cetera. So like, how do you, how do you, like, how does a marketer think about it when they think about like, you know, what is the amount of time that I'm going to invest in this particular tactic? Great question. So we do integrate with most of the major platforms, but for something like a lease, what I would say is just go on our website, design a card. You can do it. It takes basically two images. You want an image for the back. If you're doing a flat card, you want an image for the back and then you want a little logo at the top of the front, you know, and you're right below that. And then you can upload an Excel sheet of addresses and messages. And these can all be the same, you know, uh, dear Eric, looking forward to seeing you at the show, you know, best Elise, or it could be different, you know, Person A, person B, person C could each have a different note, and we can show you how to do that with the Excel sheets. Um, you just upload those sheets and the way they go. So the time it takes to write one handwritten note, you could send 10,000. Well, 
maybe not one handwritten note. The time it takes to write 10 handwritten notes, you could send 10,000. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we offer there. It's, it's very straightforward. Um, if you want something fancier, like a folded note, you'd have to contact our graphic design team and we'd get that set up for you as well. But it's, it's, it's very, it's as frictionless as we can make it really. So it, it only takes a few minutes to do that. That's cool. That's very cool. And then you said you had something that also connects with Zapier that allows you to be able to sort of automate this and maybe your marketing automation platform or your CRM, you know, so how would somebody do that? And in, in, let's say it's, like, you know, we'll use SharpSpring as the example. How does that trigger work, you know, where they just you know, yeah. set that up? Yeah. So when a prospect hits a certain stage in a pipeline or if uh, um, you add a tag to that contact, Whatever those actions are in Zapier, we can then tie to SharpSpring and to Handwritten. So it really just depends what you expose through Zapier or make.com, Integromat, whatever you're calling it these days. But if you expose a you know, move pipeline stage, we can then attach to that and send a handwritten note. So for instance, we're integrating with a financial services platform called Redtail right now um, and for investment managers and they can add a tag to all their users' um, birthday card. And then when they have that birthday card tag, we will look for their birthday and send birthday cards at the appropriate time. But you could easily do it, just tag all your contacts and then um, you know, send them all at once. Um, you can also, if, if that for whatever reason doesn't work, you can export from SharpSpring and import directly back into handwritten um, if it's a one-time campaign like that. Um, so then if you're tied into your exhibitor platform, you know, if they attend the event, if they attend a trade show, if they attend your Zoom uh, webinar, you can automate it off that too. That could either be through SharpSpring, it's just a different tag that's added, or if you're tied into a separate platform such as a webinar manager and they, they have moved to the have attended stage, you know, you can send them a thank you handwritten card um, with your signature on it as well. That's, that's cool. So, uh, so you've got a pretty captive audience that's listening in and we're pretty data driven. So I was kind of curious, mm -hmm. uh, obviously when you were, when you were thinking about your company, um, and you've been looking at, you know, you've obviously sent out a lot of these things and yeah. you've been gathering data on like the effectiveness and how they work. Do you have like numbers on like how they perform? Like how, how does, how do I think about this in terms of like another tactic that I'm using in comparison? Sure. So um, if you do nothing else other than send your printed mail in a handwritten envelope, whether that's through our company or you just sit down and you write those envelopes, you will have a 300% greater open rate than if it was a printed envelope. If you tie that to a handwritten card inside that envelope, um, we have seen response rates of 23 times greater than print mail or print junk mail, as we call it, 23 times. Now, handwritten notes are always gonna be more expensive than junk mail. There's just no way around it because the very first thing we do is we print something. We print a piece of stationery for you to write on. And that's all junk mail is. Junk mail is printed, but it's often printed on flimsier paper. We print it on nice, thick, quality cardstock with a tooth to it. So we're always more expensive than junk mail. But if you factor in the cost difference, we're still seven times greater ROI than, than junk mail as far as response. Uh, at least that's been our analysis. This was through a survey of car dealerships where we're trying to get people in the door to trade in, trade up, and they're seeing a 23 times greater response rate adjusted for cost, seven times greater ROI. Other uses of this are great for win-back, buy-back opportunities. As we were talking before the show, we have a client that's a snack box for offices. So um, they can send you a box every two weeks with jerky and crackers, whatever in it. Mm -hmm. And what they saw was if they screwed up that box and they, try, um, and they tried to apologize for it by sending you a handwritten note saying the box was delayed or we sent you the wrong box, whatever it might be, those customers actually had a much higher, and they wouldn't share the number with us, but a much higher lifetime value than customers that were never part of that win-back experience, that never had a screw-up, right? 
So then they thought, gee, you know, let's just raise all tides. Let's screw up with everybody and win back everybody and raise the lifetime value of all our clients at once, which is what they did. And they've seen tremendous um, value there. We have other clients, um, suit makers and, and, and the rest. They send out coupon codes via email and then they do the same ones via handwritten notes and they see a five time greater res- redemption rate off the, the handwritten note coupon versus the email coupon. And one could argue it's much harder to um, redeem an online coup- or a paper handwritten note coupon versus an online because you have to type in the code and, and all that, but they're still seeing a five times greater uh, redemption rate for those. Um, so there's a lot of situations to use handwritten notes. The most frequent is just staying in constant communication twice to four times a year. So a thank you for your purchase, full stop, not asking for anything. Just thank you for your purchase and then a Christmas card or thank you for your purchase, a Christmas and a birthday card. Those are kind of the main use cases that we're seeing. Yeah. So yeah, anything in the, in the, the follow-up post-sale customer retention, I Mm -hmm. totally see a, a significant amount of, of use here, you know, just CLM, you know, work. Um, so just kind of curious, like, do you have a, you know, like a a real life example or a case study of a, of a customer or or a client of yours where they're using that and then they are, they're actually, you know, they've come back to you and said, you know, this is working over like a long period of time. So, you know, so you, you, you were just talking about like, twice a year, you know, touch points. Are there other uses, you know, where, where this is actually, you know, effective for a, like a CLM kind of approach? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our, our biggest client is um, a sales force. They are um, solar panel installers. So they set an appointment with you, come to your house, measure you for solar panels. Um, they've grown tremendously over the past five years. They've been a client. They use us every month. Currently, they're doing 30,000 cards a month with us. So they're having 30,000 appointments a month to install solar panels. Uh, But, you know, one of the issues with our business is we're out of the loop, right? Like we send the note, they handle the tracking and the ROI, but clearly it's been working for them for five years or they would have stopped a long time ago. Uh, But they're using it as a way to follow up post, post appointment, post you know, thank you for having me in your house. Uh, we will be sending you your quote on solar panels. Here's my information. And that really sets them apart from everybody else trying to sell solar panels. Yeah. Um, this is a B2C, but it's no different B2B. I mean, it's the yeah. same exact model. We have another company going into offices doing floor care. They, uh, you know, they're trying to sell you new flooring. They're trying to sell you carpet cleaners. Uh, same exact use model, just not as at the scale that the solar panel installer is. So what's interesting to me is is we talk a lot about attribution on the show. We talk a lot about the fact that at the end of the day, some of the most difficult things to track are also some of the most effective ways to be able to get in front of somebody or make an impression. Um, You know, when we think about referrals, word of mouth, you know, obviously, you know, potentially something like this that has a real impact, um, you, you know, and, and there's a and there's a real movement right now that's happening right across B2B, especially where we're saying that, you know, hey, look, you know, not everything is a one to one direct correlation to, yep. you know, from an attribution perspective. Uh, we would love for that to be the case. But if you really step back and think about the things that impact you as a buyer, right, and you put yourself in your buyer's shoes those same things that we're talking about here are going to be the, are the ones that, you know, are again, something that you can physically take and hold something that is going to break through the clutter. Um, yeah. Know, it, and it's, it's I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's hard um, because the last thing you want to do is leave a mark on that customer saying, you know, where they're thinking they received an email or a call yeah. or a text or a handwritten note. Yeah saying, what is the value they're trying to get out of me from sending a thank you note, right? Like, how insincere is that? So that's why I say our number one use case is the full stop thank you. Just thank them. That's it. That will come back. There will be ROI. 
Don't ask for it. Don't have them do anything. Just thank them. You know, we live in a world today with unlimited abundance. Yeah. Where as much as you might think you have the only CRM system or the only email system or somebody else has the only widget, they don't. There's a million of everything. There's a million handwritten notes companies. There's a million alternatives. You know, instead of using a platform, have a bunch of people write it. You know, there's a there's unlimited abundance. And there's a requirement out there. You know, we are all so entitled where we think everybody should just use us because we're the best, right? We're the best. Why wouldn't you use us? That is completely the wrong attitude. Instead, what you should have is, thank you for using us. I appreciate you taking the time to see for yourself that we're the best. And I think that gratitude goes a lot longer than you might, a lot farther than you might think. And asking the question, what's the ROI from this thank you note is asking the wrong question because it's $3 or it's $2 to send that note in scale. Right. Is $2 not worth it? You know, um, after what's the cost to acquire that customer? How many hundreds of dollars did you spend on your AdWords campaigns and, and, and building a huge trade show booth and everything else to acquire that customer? To retain that customer is not worth the $2. Yeah. So it's interesting to me. Uh, one of the things that we used to do um, to track sort of the untrackable, for lack of a better yeah. word, in an instance like this is we would just, we would literally ask, right? So we would have a self-reported attribution field, you know, that was in a, either a demo request or, or some other piece, you know, of, of, of form that we have on our website that was around a call to action. And so we would ask, and this reminds me so much of a tactic that we used to use three or four years ago that marketing agencies still come back to us for. They, you know, they will, uh, they will reference uh, this glass print uh, hmm. tactic that we used to use. And, and, and it really what it was, it was really, it was actually pretty neat. It was, it was very hmm. unique and different. Um, and agencies still remember it years later, years hmm. later. Uh, and, you know, something like this is actually the same sort of thing, right? Where, you know, you're just, you're without a specific request, you're just saying, thank you. You're showing gratitude, um, you know, something with their name, something that's important to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have anything to do with you or your brand. And people, people respond to that. And you would see, I guarantee it, if we ran a test and we were to put this out and we were to say, look, here are, 3,000 potential prospects that are, you know, B2B customers, you know, that are, are for us. Um, we would start seeing that show up in the self-reported attribution that we do, right? Oh, I remember the the note that you sent me, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of months ago. I guarantee it to show up. Uh, and the reason I know that is because the most random things show up in the, like, of the campaigns that we can never track 100%, like the hardest yeah. things are the things that show up in that field. And, you know, when we, when we, when we ask like, you know, even this podcast, right. You know, how do you track the podcast? You can't. Uh, right. it, and, and so, you know, it's working because it does have an impact because you are able to see and talk and, you know, and sort of feel what's going on in a conversation like this um, that has an impact on somebody. And so, you know, different level layers of impact, you know, if you're in an in-person event, and you met somebody at a trade show and you shook their hand and you, you know, you had a really good conversation with somebody a year ago. Um, where's the attribution for that? Right. It's very difficult, right. but yeah. it'll show up, right. If you ask people, it'll actually show up because people remember that. And they remember that was the thing that brought them to your website or brought them back to a conversation that they wanted to have with you, you know, later on. So I, I totally agree. And there's, there's, there's a way to test that, right. You know, to be able to see, um, you know, what the, what the impact is. Um, so that's, that's really neat. That's cool. Um, so I, I guess here's my question. Um, you know, if, you know, we've talked a lot about the tactic, we've talked a lot about the impact, we've talked about, you know, the, you know, how, like how it performs, you know, against mm -hmm. maybe some other things that are out there. Um, or I think more importantly, maybe doesn't replace, but is additive to, right. So multi-channel, yeah. um, 
you know, specifically you know, like around things like customer retention, that sort of thing. I, um, I, I'm just kind of curious, like how do people get a hold of you? How do they talk, you know, like if they're interested, they're hearing something that maybe is, it makes sense for their own business. Like how would they specifically get a hold of you or, or your company? Yeah, so we're handwritten, H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-E-N. So just replace the Y, the I with a Y. Um, you can reach out to me. I'm David at handwritten.com. If you uh, look us up on LinkedIn, I'm the only David that works there, I believe. There might be another one now. Uh, I just don't know if he has a LinkedIn account. Uh, but yeah, we're on all the main channels. We've got a lot of cool videos on YouTube. Um, if you sign up and you want to um, try it, just use discount code podcast when you sign up and it'll give you five dollars in credit to give it a go um and yeah I, I highly recommend now i will you know full disclosure you'll be entered in our marketing funnel if you do this but if you go to our website and you request samples to see for yourself how real it looks that the ink smudges that the characters vary that the lines are all not perfectly straight um, request your free sample kit and um, we'll send you all sorts of information and you'll be able to see for yourself if you like it. And then somebody, if they're doing their job, will reach out to you so you don't have to reach out to them. So yeah, um, that's really it. Just please visit us at handwritten.com and see for yourself. That's cool. David, it's great having you on the show. I really appreciate it. I think there's a lot of people that are listening that are, that are going to get a lot of value from that. And, and, you know, I, Obviously, it sounds like, you know, there's not a huge investment to get started or anything. So just, you know, listening and, you know, even if it's even if it's to test, you know, it's exactly. something that, that they can do. Yeah, this is neat. Cool. Thanks, Eric. Thanks so much Thanks for having for me on. Us. Absolutely. Thank you.